Hello everyone. Welcome again to my channel. In this video I will show how to create a food packaging box dye line using Adobe Illustrator. In the end, we will test the dye line in ESCO Studio. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed yet, and press the bell icon to get the latest updates from my channel. So without further delay let's get started. Open up the Adobe Illustrator software. First, press Ctrl plus R to show rulers. Change units to centimeters. Change the fill color to none and choose any stroke color. Select the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle. Go to the transform tool, choose the reference point and change its width to 15 centimeters and height to 10 centimeters. Zoom out and change artboard size. Select this rectangle and create a copy of it by holding the Alt key and dragging it upward. Press the Shift key to adjust it perfectly. Set reference point to center bottom. Change its height to 4 centimeters. Create a copy of this flap to the bottom. Select this front flap and create a copy of it by pressing the Alt key and dragging it to the top. Always make sure that lines are well connected. Press Ctrl plus Y to check in the wild frame. Select this flap and create a copy of it. Now select this flap and create a copy of it. Change its width to 4 cm. Create a copy of it. Go to the transform tool and change it to 0.3 cm, as it will be our gap between two flaps. Select this flap and create a copy of it. Change its width a little bit. Go to the preferences and change the keyboard increment to 0.1 cm. Select the Direct Selection tool, as this flap will work as a close-up, so we will change its shape slightly. Select this flap and press the down arrow key once. Here you can see a shape. Similarly, repeat this process for the bottom one. Now we will decrease the size of this flap, as it will go inside the box. Create a copy of this flap by pressing the Alt key and dragging it to the right. Now change its size to equal to this flap. Double click on it to lock the other layers, as we will adjust the shape of this flap. Choose the Add Anchor Point tool. Add an anchor point by clicking here. Select the Direct Selection tool and select this flap. Drag this a little bit upward. Now copy these flaps to the bottom. Right click, Transform, Reflect. Horizontal, OK. Make sure that all the lines are well connected. Change the height of these flaps a little bit.
Adjust the width of this flap. Create a copy of this flap by holding the ALT key and dragging. Go to the Transform tool and change its width to 4 cm. Change the keyboard increment to 0.5 cm by going to the Preferences menu. Choose the Direct Selection tool and select this anchor point. Press the down arrow key. Similarly, repeat this procedure for the bottom ones. Now we will give it a rounded shape. Select these anchor points and drag them inside. Copy this flap to the top. Again create a copy of it. Adjust its size. Make sure that all lines are connected by going to the wild frame by pressing the Ctrl plus Y key. Select this flap and choose the Direct Selection tool. Now drag this corner a little bit upward. Drag this anchor point a little bit inside. Again, select this anchor point and drag it inside to the maximum level. It will give you this beautiful shape. Now we will create the locks inside this flap. Select the rectangle tool and drag a small rectangle shape. Change its height to 2 and width to 0.25. Now connect this shape to this flap. Create a copy of this lock. And move it down here. Drag this ruler to define a center. Change the keyboard increment to 0.01 cm. Group them by pressing Ctrl plus G. Create a copy of these locks and move them here. Now ungroup these locks and change their heights a little bit. Go to Preferences and change the keyboard increment to 0.05. Select the Direct Selection tool and give them a shape. Select these locks in this flap. Go to the Pathfinder tool and unite them. Select this flap and choose the Direct Selection tool. Choose these anchor points and drag them inside to create a rounded corner. Repeat the same procedure for this flap as well.
We are done with this side. Select all the flaps and create a copy by dragging them to the left side. Right-click it and reflect them vertically. Now choose this anchor point and connect it. Copy these locks to this side as well. So, we have created a die line of food packaging box. Now we will create the cutting, creasing, and offset path. Select the die line and choose this outline option under the Pathfinder menu. Change the color. Ungroup them. Let's create the cutting by hiding the unwanted part. Press Ctrl plus 3 to hide them. So, this will be our cutting. Press Ctrl plus Alt plus 3 key and unhide all the lines. Give them a different color. Let's create the offset path. Select the die line. Ctrl plus C to copy. Ctrl plus F to paste on front. Press Ctrl plus 3 to hide the selected one. Select this die line and increase the stroke to 15 points. And choose the round cap. Go to the object and click on the expand tool. Now head over to the Pathfinder tool and select Unite. Right-click on it and choose Release Compound Path option. Delete unwanted inner shapes. Change color to light gray. Now this is the bleed area. Press Ctrl plus Alt plus 3 key and unhide the die line. Here we have the final die line of a food packaging box. Let we use ESCO Studio to test our die line. Select one of the cut lines. Go to Select, Same. Stroke Color. Choose Cut. Do the same for fold lines. Press Select All Cuts and Folds. Press Check. Press Fold. Choose Base Panel. Click Continue. Choose Board Type and Continue. Now fold edges with 90 degree and test each part.
Now save the file. Go to Window, ESCO, Studio Designer, Show Studio. Now everything is ready to start designing. Thanks for watching.